Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. And today I think I'm gonna have like sort of a classic SNS for you. I've got several gifts, uh, viewer mail gifts and tools that's been coming in and, and a few of these I wanna share with you today. And uh, you know, my way of saying thanks to those that's been contributing here to the shop. Some of the stuff I think you'll like and a couple of them you know, may even help you out in your shop as well. So I've also got some machine work that I'm gonna share with you. We've got several uh, smaller projects, smaller machining jobs that I've done over the past several weeks. And uh, some of these I've got filmed, so I wanna share some of that with you in SNS as well. And uh, while I got you here, I wanna mention my Store Frontier website, which is where all of my t-shirts have been for sale for quite some time. Got a lot of different designs over there available to you. You know, the A-Bomb 79, the Booth Machine, some other ones there as well. I just launched three new designs over there, and those are for the Smith & Mills Shaper. I found a couple of really classic logos whenever I was, uh, I just recently got the Shaper unloaded, and uh, while I was uh, going through the books and the literature and everything, I saw some designs that I thought was just, you gotta have them on a shirt. So I had uh, Quinn help me, and we made three new art pieces for shirts. I've got them over on the Store Frontier website. Go check that out if you'd like them pick you up one and uh, thanks to everybody that's been uh, you know purchasing a shirt over there I really appreciate it so let's go ahead and uh, jump to our footage for this week these guys right here are some uh, front axles that uh, they belong to a friend of mine Phil here this is uh, for his MR2 project he's been working on I showed that intake that uh, he was installing well he was uh, changing the the front axles on the car and I can't recall the reason why I've had this for a few weeks now but these uh, front end axle pieces right here are different than the uh, stock axle right here and the only difference really is they've got the journal here machined for the oil seal these do not have the uh, journal machined on there for for the seal other than that everything fits up the same so I wanted to experiment with it first and make sure that I could do it. So I've actually already got one done. This is the one I've already machined right here. So we turned it back 14 millimeter. Now I can't recall what the diameter is. I'll have to tell you in a minute. But I just turned it so to just mimic that right there. Okay. And then this is the hub that it actually uh, fits through. So like the uh, stock one <clears throat> goes in here goes in and pulls up on that oil seal draws up with the nut there of course so he's uh he had brought these to me and asked if this was something that i could do so i wanted to play around with it and uh i was able to get it done i was going to show you so you know parts like this is they they go through a, a heat treatment so they're they're usually really really hard and i was using my uh, hardness tester files right here so this is a, a 60 Rockwell, and it does not want to cut that. It's just still, it's kind of sliding across it. But you can take a 65 file, and it cuts. Okay, so this is going to be, you know, between 60, maybe 61, 62, you know, somewhere around there. So anyway, I'll show you what I've done. I just went ahead and chucked the spline. I'm using my six-jaw chuck and it shouldn't damage the spline in any way. Just chuck that, put a bell center in the end, and then just do my turning right there. And to uh, do the radius, <clears throat> I actually don't have a right-handed, uh, I'm sorry, left-handed tool that I need to hold my radius uh, insert. So what I did was I, take, I took that tool and flipped it upside down. Since I'm going this way, I flipped the tool upside down and was able to cut the radius, and it worked real well. So I'll go get this one set up and I'll show you some clips of the machining of this one here. So what I'm using for my tool there, or my insert, it's a CNMG insert. I'm using these. Uh, his car TP3500 is the grade. These are a pretty good, uh, tough insert to uh, to use for some hard turning as long as you 
turn it slow, it'll usually cut through there. This was a pack that I had uh, scored off of eBay some time back. Don't have a lot invested in them. And they're good for stuff like this. Now once you get through that outer hard surface, it'll start cutting into soft steel. That's what you're hearing is the change in the hardness now. After this cut, I'll start leaving some steps in it that look like that, that we'll clean up with our radius tool. We're ready to cut that radius, so this is what I was talking about with my tool. So this is a top notch, right-handed tool. We're, really what I need is a left-handed tool, but I don't have one. So we're just, we flipped it upside down into the tool. I've got the center height adjusted correctly there so the tool is on center and just make sure it's good and tight whenever you do this because there's nothing to keep it from going up except for the clamping force of the clamshell there all right so let's go ahead and get that cut in Just take little bites of it at a time. Kind of like you would a turning tool. Just come in and take a little bit. That way you can just blend it in with that diameter. Just touched it. And just come into that radius until it's blended together nicely. Just like that. That looks good. We'll just do a little polish in there to, to clean it up. And uh, so we just got to do our chamfer now. So we'll use this MCHNN tool uh, to do the chamfer in there. And I kicked the, uh, the uh, multi-fix around one notch. And we'll cut it at that angle right there. This will be the, uh, the lead-in angle for the seal to ride up on. And stop right when it starts trying to chatter there. All right, now we're just going to go ahead and break that that other shoulder out here. Get rid of that sharp burr. All right, and that's it. That's turned and done. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of emery paper just to kind of smooth out the uh, turned face there. So this is the uh, the hub that Phil brought me that these axles actually fit in there. And I, I don't know if he's planning on using these or if these are just going to be replaced or not. These may be just sample pieces. I'm not sure, but because you can hear how bad that is, those bearings in there. So anyway, this should go up in there, and it should shoulder up right here up on that inner race. And then this just you know slips up into that oil seal there. The uh, splines are a little snug going in. You just got to kind of tap them to get it to go all the way up in there. And that's where it's seated on that shoulder in there. So now it's going to work for him. That's what he, that's what he needs right there. When he was trying to install this before, he said it was, 
he knew something was wrong because it wasn't going in there right. And we discovered it was the, it was the, uh, the journal there for the oil seal. So anyway, we got him fixed up and now he can continue on with his little customized hot rod build. And I'm sure he'll be happy. I'll give him a call and tell him to come and get this stuff. So Clark Easterling over at Windy Hill Foundry is making these six inch machinist squares. These are, these are six inch solid cast iron machinist squares of his own design that he come up with. And he has been casting these and just got them on the market. I believe last week he started selling these. So if uh, this is something that you would like, be certain to uh, get, in get in contact with him and see about purchasing one. I'll have his contact info down below. So uh, look there. But um, they are stress relieved and ready to machine. And if you go back and check out my uh, iron crusher video that I recently made with Clark, all that, all that iron that you see is uh, breaking up from those brake discs. That's what he uses to make parts like this. In fact, most all of his castings come from those uh, brake discs. So I'm really looking forward to machining this myself. I, I uh, want to make this a shaper project just like I did with my straight edges. And I think I want to put a little spin on this different than what you normally see. I know my buddy Keith Rucker, he's already got his and he showed his on his channel. I know he, he milled it and then he surfaced ground the sides. And uh, I think I'm going to be using the shaper for all of mine. So I'm looking forward to get to this. I've got some jobs that I'm working on, so I can't get to it quite yet. But uh, Clark is offering these in a, in a machined finish as well. He's got someone local that uh, he's contracting to uh, machine these if you want one that's fully machined. So there you go. Thank you very much, Clark. I'm uh, really excited to have this. And uh, by the way, this is the, the, the A-Bomb 79 logo casting that we did whenever we visited him back there in uh, March. A little closer up of what it looks like. I have not done anything to it other than just wire brush and kind of clean it up. I would like to uh, finish this as well. I'd like to put a machined uh, face across the letters there and come in here and drill these holes out. I think that would be pretty cool. And it's just going to be a piece of, you know, wall art. Just something for us to uh, remember. Fun that we created. And uh, there you go. So, again, thanks, Clark. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to cutting this in. We're about to get started on our next job here. This is uh, sent to me by one of my viewers that uh, they do automotive type uh, applications. And what they have is uh, they have these control arms, which are aluminum. And I uh, didn't get into specifics with them about what the application is for uh, or what they go on, that kind of thing. I do know that they need a modification made to these in order for the bushings here to work, to go in them. So this particular bushing is designed for a, uh, a steel arm. And the problem with the aluminum arms is where this bushing goes right here, you're approximately uh, 50 to 60 thousandths thicker here than on the steel arm. So when they go to stick this bushing in, you've got a snap ring groove there that retains it into the control arm. And it's just a little bit shy. You can see the, the groove trying to stick through there. So you cannot get the snap ring on there in place. So what they asked me if I would do is to machine both sides of the control arm, take an equal amount off each side so that they can install the bushing and put the snap ring on it like they should be able to. So we've got, it's, uh, it's actually just uh, two sets of them here uh, they want me to do so that they can, you know, get these, these two sets installed. So that's what we're gonna do. It's approximately a 16th. And what we'll do is go to the milling machine, probably gonna use my super spacer because the chuck on the super spacer, the way that I can chuck this on the ID, it, uh, it catches the uh, the bore really nicely with that that style of chuck that I got on there. So we'll catch the ID and then we'll just machine equal amounts off both sides of the control arms. As simple as that. So let's go get it done. Take some measurements real quick before we get started. So these are right at an inch and a quarter wide, 1.25 inches. So they range anywhere from what, about 1.245 to around 1.250. All right, and then, so we'll go ahead and just take our our bushing there 
and our snap ring and I've got some snap ring pliers that we'll use to go ahead and install it onto the bushing here just like that and we can so this is the dimension here that we're wanting to uh, machine the arms to so we'll come here and get some measurement it looks like they've got it machined to uh, one and three sixteenths so we'll make sure that we give them a little bit of clearance just so that when it slides through you got a few thousandths clearance for the snap ring to to fit in there but it looks pretty pretty good right around if I get the caliper squared up we're right at one and three sixteenths all right before we uh, jump knee deep into our project here I wanted to go ahead and uh, get one of them done off camera so that I can focus on what we got to do get my setup proven so let's go ahead and try it I've got this first one cut and according to my measurements I give myself five thousandths we might need to increase that to maybe maybe ten thousandths. So let's see if we get our snap ring on here. Just doing this rag to um, just in case it tried to pop off there. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Will that fit? That gave me five thousandths clearance. So that's not going to move and not enough to where you can feel it anyway. All right. I just took an equal amount off of both sides of it, just like we mentioned there. Uh, ended up taking a total of 65 thousandths off this one. And that's the very first fit up right there. So I think that's going to work out pretty good. Let's see if I can get it off there now. Let me snap ring off. There we go. All right, I think I got her figured out, so we'll go ahead and take you to the mill. Just let the uh, loud straight pipe guys go by. Um, I'll take you to the mill, and we'll go ahead and start machining them now. These things have been banged around quite a bit. They got some burrs on the face there, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just do a little deburr on them. Looks like our... Uh, Jaws might be just a little too wide to hold them. I'm just going to take this uh, mill smooth file and just do a little draw file just to remove any of the burrs so that I can uh, bump it down flat. Just like that. This is my setup here. And the reason why I'm using my super spacer chuck to hold these over my, uh, I've got my low profile chucks. This particular chuck and these jaws on here they have a radius machined on uh, this portion of the jaw. So the way it matches up with this bore is that you don't have just an extreme sharp point of the corners of these jaws digging into the surface there. It actually kind of lines up really well with this radius inside there. So as I said, we've only got the most that I measured the difference between the thicknesses here is going to be 5,000. So I'm just going to push this thing down. And snug it up this could be something that I do more of and it'd be a, a somewhat of a little bit of a production you know so I don't want to I don't want to take too long making sure that this thing is absolutely dialed in concentric from top to bottom there we're just going to lay it in there flat because it's so close I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that side's tapped down we'll mill this side and then we'll flip it over and we'll bump it down on our machine face there just make sure I got a little bit of torque there on the jaws and we're we're in business we're ready to mill it this is the face mill we're going to use it actually uses negative rake inserts but it still works fine for aluminum these are my uh, CNM, cnmg inserts the reason why i love this mill is that it uses the odd corner there so it uses the hundred and the uh, hundred degree corner of the insert so whenever you burn these up say on the lathe you can bring these inserts over here to the mill and utilize this uh, this face mill here to use up the other four corners of the insert we do our 30 thou. Oh, let me, uh, I wanted to put a little bit of um, tap magic on there. I'll be right back. Those inserts are actually designed for steel, but they, they still work for aluminum. 
it's just going to be a little more teary than the uh, insert that you would normally use for aluminum. But we're going to run it. This is tap magic should help with that uh, little bit of tearing and galling that it does. Yeah, cut looks nicer than the first one that I did. So that that magic is doing a good job, leaving a really nice, really nice finish on it. Running 2720 on the spindle speed here. That looks great. Really nice. So we're going to take this out. We're going to deburr it, file it, and then we'll flip it over and uh, do the same on the other side. I want to go ahead and get a just a quick check of where I'm at. All right, right around 227. Use this Noga tool right here. Does a really good job. Nice clean cut on this. Perfect. All right, one more side to mill there. Just touching that side. Just touching that side so we're good and square. Go ahead and go up our other um, 32. Mike here and see where we're at. So I need to make another cut so that we've got some clearance. See, that should have given me my clearance I wanted. We're at one inch 182, so we got approximately five thousandths. 
should work out. We're going to go ahead and uh, I'll deburr this and we'll check it and make sure it works. This is the second one you just saw me machine. So we'll do our test fit. So I'm shooting for five thousandths clearance over the uh, width there that we need. 1.182 on the uh, total thickness of our trailing arm there. Control arm. Looks like it's going to work. I think that's a perfect fit there. Precision fit. So we're going to roll with it. We've got two more to machine. I'll get you some uh, closer up shots there of the uh, machine in action and we'll get this job finished up. Well, that's going to finish up that job. We got all four of them done there. Again, we've got the uh, got the left and the right. Just uh, two sets is what we got. Two pairs, and they all they all fit up just like they should. Got about five thousandths of clearance there for the bushing. Simple enough. All right, that one's done. Let's go ahead and move on to the next project, and we'll see you there.
I decided to go ahead and mount the stair at 926 here on this corner of my welding table. This, uh, this corner section right here is slightly bent, so it's not really a, a good usable flat surface, but it's flat back here where the uh, vise is mounted. So uh, just to kind of get it off my other workbench, I'm gonna put it right here and be able to use it whenever I want to, and it's bolted down. And I can also take it if I want and swing it around to this side of the table if I wanna use it over here, but it kind of hangs out. This is more of an alleyway right in here in this part of the shop, so it kind of sticks out, especially if you have to open it up, you know, for something big. So I'll only put it over here, you know, when we're actually wanting to use it for something. But I'm gonna like, like having it right here. It's gonna be handy. Another big vise ready for me to uh, go to whenever I need it. My good friend Jason over at Fireball Tools just sent me this really cool shipment of his uh, of his welding squares. These are the new versions that he is offering on his website now, which are the black oxide coated. Uh, not only do they look cool with the black oxide coating there, they actually have a little bit of uh, you know they they help inhibit rust from uh, growing on them there as well. So we've got the mini. These are the minis here. This is the mini monster square. And then this one is the mini mega square. All his squares are now tapped on both sides. They supplies it with these tabs there so that you can position these around if you want and be able to, you know, square up on, uh, on two planes. You know, you can just pull, pull your material up to those tabs in any kind of way that you need. So a lot of whole locations there that you can put the tabs at or take them off if you don't need them. This one here, is the this is the magic square which is the adjustable angle square there so you got a lock in the center and you can rotate this around to whatever angle you want you can also open it all the way up and lay it flat and he's got v blocks built in here as well so you could take it apart and have you two v blocks or or if you have two of these you know you could set two of them in line there without having to take them apart and have you some v blocks there for uh, holding rounds so super cool tool right there I've actually got the old model that he sent me a few years ago this is the new the new edition of it he doesn't have the old one anymore and uh, this one's got a little bit more use out of it than the uh, the old style there and then he also sent me the uh, the mega the uh, this is the monster square this is the normal size this is the big boy right here tapped on both sides for the tabs and then, of course, this one is your ugh, big boy mega square. Tapped on both sides there as well. It comes with the tabs. And he also sent me, he's offering these guys too. So there's several packs of them right here. And you can see that block, <laughs> black oxide getting on my hands. But he offers these little screws right here, these little tabs. These are the round tabs that screw into the square. I've got this one. So I've got a short one screwed in right there. And so he's got a long version and a short version that you can screw in here to where if you, uh, if you don't want to use the flat tabs, you can actually take these guys, you know, and say like you can hang it. You can hang it on a, a side of a table or a big work piece that you're fixturing up. So that's pretty cool right there. He sent me a couple bags of each size. We got the long ones and we've got the short ones right there. And don't forget that he also offers these in aluminum version too. This is one of the uh, aluminum mini monsters that he sent me a while back. We got this and, a, and the Mega Square. And of course he's got, this is one of the older ones there. So that's the difference between the uh, plain cast and then the uh, black oxide right there. Very cool stuff, man. Uh, and then one last thing is these are two of his new 
these are the one, two, three block sizing of his magnetic shop blocks. So he's got these blocks that he makes in standard sizes, both in imperial and metric sizing and just uh, all different range sizes that you could stack together if you need a build up. You can use them like, kind of like you would use a gauge block, but not for gauge blocks. You know, if you're, if you're fixturing a piece and you need a spacer over here next to your, uh, to your work piece there to space something out exactly an inch or two inches or three inches, that's where these uh, shot blocks that he makes come into play. And they are magnetic so that you can stick them together if you want to or stick them to your workpiece, you know, things like that. So this is probably a size that was uh, people were asking him about was the one, two, three size, which is a standard block size around the machine shop. So very cool. Thank you for those, Jason. Those are those are awesome. So I'll have Jason's website info in the video description. You can go there and uh, check these guys out. And he's always running a, a promo code where you can get 10% off your purchase there on uh, any of his items. And it's uh, A Bomb 79. So uh, go give him a little bit of love. These are awesome products. All of the guys in the welding community have been using these things and um, everybody just loves them. Jason is a very inventive guy, very smart, intelligent. And uh, not only does he create really cool welding tools for, you know, for welding and fabrication, He's got a great YouTube channel as well, where he, uh, he, he's got his own projects and things that he does. So be sure to check out his YouTube channel because he makes some really cool videos over there. So uh, Jason, thank you very much for the squares. These things are awesome.